Hello, welcome to Kajos Consultants. I'm your facilitator, Joshua. And today I'll be taking you through frequency analysis. By the end of uh, this session, you should be able to run frequency analysis, generate graphs, charts, and tables. Uh, know the difference that uh, differences that exist between different uh, percentages. And also should be in a position to show or insert data labels on your graphs and their charts. So here, this is the SPSS software and uh, where all our data have been captured. We have about uh, five categories here that uh, we'll be using for this entire exercise. So the first one is age, second is gender, education, work experience and uh, marital status. So all these data have been computed here and coded all the way with each variable, ranging from name to the role. For example, for age here, we have uh, the type defined as numeric with these eight decimals label, and you have the values where you have number one for those who are below 25, two, 25 to 30, three, 36 to 45, and four, 46 to 50, and then finally five for 56 years and above. If you have no knowledge or you don't really know how we can code the data or how you can do the data coding in SPSS, you can refer to a video that we did by simply typing Kajos Consultants, Kajos Consultants on your YouTube search tab. If you type that, you'll find a video here which I did on data coding and data entry in SPSS. By that, we'll be in a position to learn how you can code your data and how you can enter your data. SPSS normally has uh, two views. The first view is the variable view where all the variables are entered. Then the second view, the second view is data view where all our data here is uh, entered data are entered. So here we have uh, data ranging up to number 41. So we capture the data for 41 people who can check through and uh, find that uh, we have uh, data number 30 for under the category of age. This respondent or this person did not fill in that position. So that will be marked as a missing, a missing value. Also, we can check through and find if everything is in order. We come here again, we find number 28. This one is number 20, the 28th person did not fill in uh, his or her education level. But, so we'll be in a position to explain all those when we'll be generating these tables. So to do to run frequency analysis or to do frequency analysis, simply check on your SPSS main menu. We have the analyze menu. So come and click on analyze menu. After clicking on analyze menu, take your cursor to descriptive statistics, then frequencies. So on frequencies, click on frequencies and click on frequency so we find all our values, all the variables, if it's the first time you are doing uh, such, or you are running such kind of analysis, all your variables will be on the left hand side of the table that appears on the dialog box. So these are our entire dialog box. So if you want to run the frequency analysis for age, so we can, we can take how we can move using this arrow pointing to the right, you can move it, you can move the age variable to the variables table on your right hand side. Then simply, since we only need uh, tables to appear, you can click okay. 
to find get our table. So the first table that will appear only show the, the all the variables that you have run for such that kind of analysis. So for this case, we only did analysis for, for age. So age is here. You have the valid is 40 and the missing is one. So valid simply means these are only the cases that were entered. So out of and missing means that section was not filled at all. So out of 41, 40 people responded to the age category. Then one person did not respond. That is why we have one missing. If you come to this uh, lower, lower table, you have age with all the values as I indicated earlier, one was for those who are below 25, then 25 to 35 was represented by two. That is when we did the coding. Then 36 to 45 was three, 46 to 55 was uh, four, then five was for those who are 56 and above. If you come here, we get the frequency. Frequency simply means the number of appearances or the entries that are done for each value. So for here, you can only find there were six people who marked who are falling in the category of below 25. The percentage here is 14.6. So this 14.6, this is the percent that is calculated for all the cases, including the missing value. Just to indicate something here, we have here, we had a can search our calculator. Yeah, we have a calculator here. So our total people who responded to this or who gave out the information, they were 41. But for the age, only 40 people filled in that information. So 40, so we get our valid are missing as one, but our valid is 40. So under the this category, category of, uh, of percent, you have here as 14.6, meaning this one, this one calculate for all the cases. So we simply take the, the number of entry, entries, which are six, entry, which are six, that is six, then we divide by, the total cases in each in that category of 41, then you multiply by 100, you get 14.6 into one decimal place, that is 14.6%. If we come here, we get valid percent. So valid percent is calculated as the entries, which again, we can come to our calculator. The entries there were six, so we take six, then the valid entries were 40 because one person did not uh, fill in that position, that uh, section, or did not give out the information for that particular uh, part. So we get six divided by 40, you get 15, and then we multiply by 100, you get 15%. Uh, so that is how we calculate a valid percent, but SPSS will be there as long as you give the correct instruction it will give you that valid percent. For, for cumulative percent, this is simply uh, cumulatively you add the values from top going to bottom or from top going down. So for this, we have now number one as uh, 15. So we have, uh, and again, come here to our calculator. So we have that as 15. So if you have uh, that as uh, 15, so you can take 15% then add to the, which are the number, the another percent which is only 37.5. If you add 37.5, you get is at 52.5. Uh, so that is how you add. So you leave a question to now add 52.5, you add to 22.5 get 75, then until you reach the final number of 12.5, so you find the 100 will be all through. So let's uh, do another one. So what if you want to, so you still go to analyze menu, 
uh, descriptive statistics, then frequencies. Let's say, and now take this edge to this other way. Let's say you want gender, but now for the gender, we want to generate also maybe a, a bar graph. So if you want to generate a bar graph, you click on charts. If you click on charts, you'll find all these values will be appearing. If you click none, it means no chart or, or bar graph or histogram will appear. So you want to use a bar chart or a bar graph. Then we click on percentages, then click continue, then click on okay. So it will be indicating here until it's, uh, you find here written IBM SPC statistics processor is ready. So here you find the table for gender has been generated because we also checked the box for the table and also we have the gender. So for this gender, you find that uh, the graph, the bar graph does not have any value, meaning if you now uh, present your data in this uh, by using uh, the graph alone and you don't indicate, maybe someone will just be able to read the interpreted data or the narrative part of it, or will not be able to, to get what exactly is on the, on the graph. So if you want to insert data label on this graph so that to read the percentage that is uh, also indicated here on the table, here we have it. You can simply come, come here and uh, double click. You can uh, double click on the graph. If you double click on the first graph, another graph will appear with a, a title chart editor. So on that second bar graph, right click. That is, you can use the, the right key on your mouse if you are using a mouse or the right key on your touchpad. That is all when you're using your laptop. Then go to show data label. Show data labels is down here. Then click on show data labels and we find the percentages <coughs> being indicated or being inserted on the, on the graph. So by that you can easily come now close the first one and close the even the second graph with the chart data and remain with the first graph. So here we can easily tell that there are 58.5% of uh, the total of the male population and here we have 41.46%. Always remember when you are presenting your data, use the valid percent because that is the percent that now account for those who participated or those who filled in the required information for that category. So that is how we can now again go back and uh, run another analysis. That is simply come to analyze descriptive statistics, then frequencies. You can take gender to this left box, then click on education level. Maybe now for education level, you can choose to use, click on charts, you can choose to use pie charts, then percentage, click on percentage, then continue. Then maybe for this case now, if you don't need a table to appear or the SPSS to generate a table, uh, you can uncheck that box, then we click on OK. Then we'll find our bar chart, our pie chart. So the pie chart is here. So again, if you want values to be inserted or data labels to be showed on our pie chart, you can simply double click. Double click, then another chart here will appear with the editing or with the title chart editor. And as we did earlier, right click. If you right click, you'll find here show data labels, click on show data labels. Then we find the values of the percentages also inserted there. So we can easily interpret the blue color. Here is a representing diploma. Then you have a green here, university first degree. This is a gray 
uh, postgraduate then purple that is uh, for the missing value which means there you also had one missing value for the purple so you can always cross check that maybe if you forgot uh, to fill in that information or may or from your side or it was from the person who was filling or the responsible giving in such uh, information so you can easily tell so uh, diploma there were 21.95 percent university degree were 58 so means they were the majority 58.454 percent so this is the way in which uh, this data can be done and you can still do another one maybe what you left out and still analyze then uh, descriptive then frequencies education level you have already done that then we can take uh, work experience and maybe for this one you can do an histogram if you wish to do that histogram click on continue then okay then we will find that the histogram will appear here with all the values that we have for the work experience so meaning if we go back to our data and check the values how did we record <clears throat> simply click on variable view to get uh, for the work experience you have those who had work experience of less than five years then you had uh, those who had a work experience of five to ten years then you had those who have work experience of above uh, 10 years that is for number three above 10 years so you can check on that i mean you can try to generate a table mm, simply go to analyze descriptive then frequencies for work experience here now you can come and on charts you can click none continue you can check the box first for display frequency table then charts here can have none then continue work experience the reason as to why i'm doing this is because there is another thing i would like to explain here so in this table we find uh, 19 which are the majority had experience of less than five years then uh, above 10 years was seven, then five to 10 years, they were 15. So when now you check at the histogram here, histogram made a mean of 1.71, which is above 1.5. So we can easily round off that and get uh, 2.0. So meaning the mean work experience for for these um, individuals or the uh, people who gave out uh, the information were well, uh, something ranging between five to 10 years. So that is the mean because you do remember less than five years were giving a one, five to 10 years, uh, we were giving two, then above 10 years, we are giving three. So meaning, if you get a value that is uh, maybe 1.4 for the mean 1.4 and below or 1.4 to 1 then it will mean the mean work experience for majority or for these people were less than five years if you get a one because one represent less than five years then anything between 1.5 to 2.4 will represent those who are between those who are 5 to 10 years, then 2.5 to 3, we can round off that and get 3. So meaning majority of these people had a work experience or the mean work experience was above 10 years. So this is how we get uh, this information. Uh, some other thing that I would like to add, which was uh, not on this list, that you also need to know is how, how we can export this data. Now you can export the data, export uh, output, 
output data or we can store the tables and graphs tables and graphs and uh, store it and store the charts to ms1 because you know once uh, you have generated this data <clears throat> you will always uh, export this data to your microsoft word so that you can do a thorough analysis so you can further interpret the data so to export this data to your microsoft word or ms word simply click on on the spss main menu click on file once you click on file then come here and look for where we have export then click on export if you find the export will generate a new dialog box here will appear then the only part of concern here is to come and check where we have re this place written browse so come and click on browse if you click on browse you will find this player dialog box with save file looking in the looking we simply look for where do we want to save this our data if for this case we can check and see we want to save data data in our desktop so under that desktop we can give it a name maybe of a demo demo analysis so that is the file name that you want to appear you choose first of all just to repeat you come and uh, choose the folder. So I will choose the folder of our desktop. That is where we want to save our, our Word document that I will, uh, for the graphs and the table that we we'll later interpret. Then our file name here, type whichever name, it depends, with, uh, depends on how you like to save your data. Click on the file name, then type the name you like, how you like to save that data, then click on save. So once you have clicked on save, then come here and click OK. You find that will be running that the data will be saved. So you can easily come here and minimize all this and uh, check if that data is on our desktop here we save. So you can see here, we have the data already saved in MS Word. So here we can edit, can delete what we don't want and easily edit uh, this, you can delete the part that you don't want and remain with only the section that you want. So here is the edge, find the edge is there. So you can easily interpret this, delete also the sections. Here you can delete the section that you don't want. Uh, the valid percent. Those ones you can delete, and maybe if you don't want the part of cumulative percent, you can also delete that. You can always also uh, do that and have this was for edge. You can also out of it these tables to content by simply selecting the old table, right clicking, and then out of fitting to content or to window so that it can look nice that way. So here you can easily type 15% uh, or below uh, 25 years. So this one you can easily, you can easily type uh, that and have your data in Word. So another way in which you can do this or you can uh, export this data is by simply selecting everything that you want. So you can select what you want by simply coming here and uh, selecting everything. Check on your keyboard, these are key written. Or these are a key that we have written control that is CTRL on the control key. Hold, press it down press down the control key. Then on the keyboard, we have a key with letter A. Uh, click also press on A. So if we press control key, that is the CTRL and the A key, 
everything will be selected and then bring your cursor this other side and right click on your right the right key of your mouse or of the keyboard then you can copy this data so once you have copied that data you can come to your where you are maybe the desktop and create a new folder so for this case, I can look for a blank and look for a blank uh, file to work with blank word document that is the blank word document then in this uh, black uh, blank word document i can easily right click on using the right key on my deck, uh, laptop or the right key of your mouse then you'll find the option the best option and use this middle option so that you can have a, a data or a file with a small with small size or maybe KB. The first option will give a, it's likely to give you a file that will have a very large size or maybe up to 10 MBs, that is megabytes or even 15, depends with the, uh, the number of tables and the graphs and uh, even the chart that you generated. You click on this, this data will be will be pasted here and we can easily now come and save it with whichever file name that we like to save it with so if you again save it in our desktop can maybe give it frequency variables whichever name that we like then you click on save and um, if you minimize all these so we find it here we can easily open and have all data and do whatever we want do uh sorry uh frequency this it is here you can edit this and we can um, even do further analysis the interpretation of uh, that data so this car marks the end of our presentation uh, for today thank you very much for listening in and uh, please remember to subscribe using the subscription uh, tab below. Thank you very much and may you have a good, may you have a good time.